Hi there, folks. Today we're looking at logistics models. And uh, logistic models or logistic functions are really just exponential functions, but they're special kinds of exponential functions that level off as we kind of approach some value. All right, so it grows exponentially, but then levels off as it approaches some constant value. And what we've been looking at so far in terms of things like exponential growth is we've been looking at uninhibited exponential growth. And uninhibited exponential growth just continues to grow exponentially, okay? But a logistics model places kind of restrictions on that growth so that what happens is it levels off, all right? And this is a typical thing that happens, uh, especially with like larger mammals when you look at populations. The environment can only support so many, so the population has to level off at some point. They can't continue to grow exponentially or to use up all the natural resources, that kind of thing, okay? And so here's what the logistics model looks like. And notice it has some of the elements of our uninhibited growth in here. Uh, remember, our, our continuous model for, for exponential growth was uh, A of T equals A times E to the KT. Well, here it's P of T, so the population based on time. And really, uh, you know, that's still uh, function notation. I could just have easily put a Y there instead of a P of T. Uh, I could have still used A of T, it wouldn't matter, all right? So we just uh, use that to just kind of distinguish this a little bit from some of the others, okay? Uh, but we see that A times E to the kind of the KT thing uh, thrown in there as some of those same elements, all right? Uh, but C is the carrying capacity, so that's the, the, the value that we're approaching, okay? So when we talk about carrying capacity, it's basically the limit that, that we can't quite reach, all right? It's that extreme that we can't quite get to. And really what you'll see when you talk about a logistics model is they kind of look like this, all right? So when I see a logistics model graphed out, it grows exponentially, but then kind of levels off it as it approaches some value. Okay, and we've already talked about the fact that when you kind of look at this in terms of a, a graph, all right, that we have essentially a horizontal asymptote. Uh, you typically uh, at the uh, x-axis, whether it's approaching but never touching. Well, that carrying capacity, what that does is it gives us another horizontal asymptote that this thing approaches but doesn't touch. Okay, it grows exponentially but then has to level off. All right. And again, as you know, if you kind of use the the idea of a population growing, well, the the environment can only support so many, and as you use up those natural resources and things like that, uh, you know, it, you can't continue to grow. Okay, things will start to die off, uh, and uh, the, the growth slows down. Okay, and so we kind of have to find this equilibrium, and that's what uh, logistics models kind of show us. So, uh, so a couple other things here. So C is the carrying capacity. That's that value we're approaching. Uh, a is a constant that helps determine the initial value or is associated with the initial value. A is not the initial value this time. And they should have called it something else, maybe called it B or something like that. All right, instead of calling it A, instead of calling it uh, the, the initial amount, um, the, you, the same variable that we had for the initial amount, because it's not exactly the initial amount. It's some constant value associated with the initial amount. Okay, so please be aware of that. It's not necessarily the initial amount. It's a value associated with the initial amount, okay? Uh, K is, once again, the growth rate or the growth rate constant here, and uh, T is the time, all right? And so, once again, you know, when you look at this, you're probably looking at it and say, well, how is it growth if it's a negative KT? Well, that's in a denominator, so a negative uh, exponent in a denominator is almost like having something in a numerator, so kind of think of it that way, okay? So population based on time equals the carrying capacity divided by 1 plus A times E to the negative KT. Okay, where A is a, a constant value associated with the initial amount. Okay. Uh, for example, if I look at something like this guy, it says the population of chupacabras uh, in a given area is uh, 26, yielding an A value of 5. The population is growing at a rate of uh, 0 0.05 yearly. If the environment can only support a population size of 156, what will the population be in 5, 10, and 20 years? And so we're just going to be plugging this into the calculator a couple times. And uh, we just have to set this up. So if I set this up, I'm going to do the population uh, based on 5 years. So I'm going to start with a five, 5 years. And so this equals the carrying capacity. The carrying capacity is 156. That's how many the environment can support. Okay, That's the value we can't uh, go beyond. Okay, so the population can't go above that 156 over one uh, uh, plus 
A, A this time, notice it says kind of the initial amount here is 26, but that's not the A value. The A value is 5. It's some constant value associated, and yes, they're related in some way. Uh, we can derive that 5 using that 26, but the 5 is the thing that we want for this particular example. So 5 times E to the negative K, which is uh, 0 0.05. Uh, times uh, t, the time this time, we want to do five years, okay? And again, when you plug this into the calculator, you might have to have some parentheses there. These are very tricky to plug into the calculator all in one shot. If you wanted to plug this in all in one shot, you'd have to use a ton of parentheses. You have to do 156 divided by, you're going to have to put that entire denominator in parentheses. And then you're going to have to put this exponent in parentheses as well okay so just be careful make sure you're telling the calculator exactly what to punch in here and i don't prefer to do it that way i don't like to do it all in one shot what i will do is this is i will take order of operations into my own hands because i'm a crazy person i'm going to do e to the uh negative uh 0 0.05 times five i'll hit enter and then i'll do the times five and then i will add the one and then I will do 156 divided by that answer, okay? And I get the same thing. I get 31.875, so about 32, okay? Uh, the nice thing about plugging this in all in one shot is if I kind of uh, go back up here. There it is. There it is all in one shot. See, I could do that, and what's nice about the calculator is I can recall things that I've already plugged in. So now if I want to do this again, ready? I wanted to change this to 10 years. Well, to change it to 10 years, I can just go up to the, my previous thing that I've already punched in, and I can just change this 5 to a 10. And there it is, 38.6 something, so 39. And then if I want to change it to a 20, once again, everything's the same. I'm just going to plug it into my calculator again. And see, this is the kind of stuff they would want you to do in science class. This is why you'd want to maybe punch it in all in one shot or create a computer program where you just interchange the values so that I can quickly go back here and change things. Saves me uh, quite a bit of time. So it uh, looks like 55. And so when you look at this, the idea here is that the, the growth is slowing down based on the fact that we're getting to this point where it's going to level off. Okay, <clears throat> If we kind of compared this to uninhibited growth, so the un uninhibited growth model for this, because this is a continuous model, would be y equals... Uh, a times e to the kt. And so if I plugged it into this instead, watch what happens. Let's, let's kind of compare this thing. Or sorry, uh, typically we say a of t here. It's the notation I tend to use. a of t equals a, to the e, a times e to the kt. Uh, but if I used that and said, okay, let's see what the amount would be at five years using uninhibited growth, now I would use the 26 because that is the initial amount, okay? Uh, times e to the k times t. And once again, I can plug this right into my calculator. That's 26 uh, times e to the 0 0.05 times 5. And so we look at that. It's pretty close to, to the other one. The other one gave us a 32. This one gives me a 33. Okay, So not a huge difference here. But now if I do the same thing with 10 years, if I plug the, the 10 in, I'm just going to go right to the calculator this time instead of writing it out. If I plug the 10 in, look at this, we're up to uh, 43. And so we can see that that's climbed quite a bit. Okay, It's climbed a little bit faster than the other one. And what happens is we get further and further out here. These values get further and further apart. Let's do the 20. Now we're up to 71 already. 
And so we can kind of see how those growths kind of compare. And the idea is that if this thing is going to level off, it's going to slow that growth rate down a little bit, okay? It's going to slow us down in terms of how quickly we are growing. All right, so that's the comparison. Uninhibited growth, yeah, it, it increases much, much faster because we don't have that cap that's causing us to level off, that's slowing things down, okay? If we look at something like this guy, it says the population uh, growth of uh, piggle wigs, uh, which are uh, flying pigs if you uh, haven't uh, seen one before, uh, in years is given by the equation P of T equals... 337 over 1 plus 7 uh, times e to the negative 0.02t. And uh, just interpreting this equation, when you look at this, what's the carrying capacity? So what is the carrying capacity of piggle wigs? Well, looking at the equation, the carrying capacity is this value right here. So it's 337. That's that value, and that's a really important value. That's the value we're approaching that we're going to level off by, okay? That's the value that the population can't exceed, okay? Uh, the growth rate this time, it's going to be a 0 0.02, and that's per year. Okay. And then it says, what's the initial population of piggle wigs? And this is the one that trips uh, students up, because students will look at this and say, oh, right here, it's seven. And that's incorrect. That's not the initial population. That seven is a constant value associated with the initial population. Okay. But the initial population, let's talk about the time. So time for the initial population, the time will be zero. So what I have to do to find the initial population is I have to plug a zero in for T, okay? And so when I do that for this one, I've got P of zero equals 337 over one plus seven times E to the negative 0 0.02 times zero. And uh, really, I'm going to do a little bit of work by hand here because it's not worth punching into my calculator yet. Because right here, when you look at this exponent, well, negative 0 0.02 times 0 is just 0. And anything to the 0 power is 1. So what I end up with here is 1 plus 7. That e to the 0 power gives me a 1, and 1 times 7 is a 7. That whole thing essentially gets rid of itself when I talk about the initial population. So now what I have is 337 divided by 8. Okay, And that I can kind of take to the calculator here. Okay. And so when I do that, it gives me a 42.125, uh, so about approximately 42 okay, is the initial population. So again, that A value that's in here is not the initial population anymore. It's a constant associated with the initial population, okay? So look at this guy, it says if the population of yetis for a given area has an initial population of 28 and a carrying capacity of 405, determine the A value for the logistics model. And so this time we want to find the A value here. And so if we talk about the, the logistics model, so once again, it's that P of T, the population based on time, equals the carrying capacity, which is 405, over 1 plus E to the negative K, which I don't know what that is, and I also don't know what time is at the moment, okay? The only thing I know for sure is that carrying capacity. However, it also gives me the initial amount. And so think about how we can use this initial amount in order to find uh, the A value. And I didn't even write A in the equation like a crazy person. There we go. And so as I look at this thing, um, that that uh, initial amount, that's a population, that's a value for population, it's a value for P over here, okay? In other words, I could plug the 28 in over here. But now, remember, that 28 is automatically associated with a time signature, and it's a time, it's a value for time of zero, because that's the initial amount, and the initial amount is always a time of zero. Okay, at time zero, that's where I start. That is the initial amount. So the population, uh, when we're talking about an initial amount, that 28 is associated with the time of zero. And see, it looks like I have too many variables here for a moment, but anything times zero is zero. So k times zero is zero. e to the zero power is still one. This equation ends up breaking down into this. And that's why I don't need much information in order to find the a value, okay? This becomes just 405 over 1 plus a. And now to solve this thing, most students would uh, just use something like cross uh, multiplying. If you think of this as over 1, we can cross multiply. 
the 28 times the 1 plus a uh, gives me a 28 plus 28a. And then the four, uh, the 405 times 1 gives me a 405. And I just solve. This is a pretty simple equation to solve now. I subtract the uh, 28 from each side. And I divide by the 28. And that can be a job for my calculator, 377 divided by the 28. And I get about a 13.46. And, uh, you know, you might feel compelled to round that to the nearest whole number because we're thinking about population. But remember, the A value is not the initial population. It's a constant value associated with the initial population. So it's okay if the A value is a 13.46 here, okay? But again, logistics models, they act uh, just like our, our uh, continuous model for growth, but they're, they're being um, uh, kind of restrained in some way. So they don't grow as fast. Uh, they level off at some point. And really, it's the same kind of thing, but it's placed under restrictions, okay? We have that carrying capacity, which is that value that we're approaching but never touching. It creates a horizontal asymptote when we think about it in terms of the graph, okay? And really, most populations in terms of like large mammals, they follow this kind of pattern in terms of growth. Okay? They follow logistics models. They have to find an equilibrium with their environment in terms of uh, the population. Okay?